When Jesus finished his Sermon on the Mount, he said this. It's Matthew chapter 7. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against the house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, the winds blew and beat against that house and it fell with a great crash. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching because he taught as one who had authority and not as their teachers of the law. We've been looking for the last couple of months at God's purposes for our lives. We've been really uh, working through The Purpose Driven Life, a uh, book originally written by Rick Warren, but we've been pulling the meat out of it, seeing what's great about it, uh, and uh, seeing what is the life that God wants from us. And I want to echo Rick Warren's words in the final section when he says, a, a living on purpose really is the only way to live. Anything else is just existing. We don't want to just exist. We want to just coast through life. We've been given a purpose for God and to live purposely is the blessed life. And you can see from Jesus' words in Matthew's Gospel that it's the, it's the, the, the life that's built on the sure foundation. It's the only one that's going to stand up in the tests of, of trials and difficulties in life. It's the only thing that's going to stand firm, certainly in the judgment of God at the end of days, when God evaluates us and looks at what is he going to say? Some people uh, think that to work out the purpose of life, you should think about what should be going to be said about you at your funeral. Are they going to say, lovely guy, nice guy, achieved all these things, made lots of money, all those things, good family guy or girl? No, well, well, no, it's a dumb question, isn't it? What we really need to think about is what God's evaluation is going to be. Is he going to say, well done, good and faithful servant? Uh, so we don't really matter what other people say, but what's God going to say about our lives? Because uh, life is all about him. And I want to just think through what, what are the questions that people ask? And what are the questions that we should ask instead about our lives? What are the three questions that people ask of themselves when they really don't understand um, and, and feel the, the weight of eternity and they don't know God and have them in life? They ask, who am I? They ask, do I matter? And they ask, what's my place in this life? And without God, without Jesus, that all those answers are going to be confused and a mess. You know, who am I? I don't know where I fit. I don't know who I am. And I'm trying to explore and reach out and try new things and all sorts of stuff to experiment and, and figure that out. Do I matter? No one seems to care. And, you know, I don't know how I stand and, and what difference is my life making? What's my place in this life? How do I fit in the systems and so on? What, what should I be doing? With God's five purposes, God's purposes that we've been looking at uh, over these last couple of months, all three of those issues sort themselves out. The who am I, the do I matter, and what's my place in this life? And so what are the questions that we should be asking to, uh, to figure it all out where, and that will really help us uh, get grounded in the truth so that we might listen to Jesus' words and and live the blessed life. Jesus went on to say in John chapter 13, uh, he washed the disciples' feet and uh, he got to the end of that little uh, life lesson that he was giving them. And he, when he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I've done for you? He asked them, you call me teacher and Lord, it's right and rightly so, it's what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you should also wash another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I've done. But here's the key bit. I tell you the truth, no servant is greater than his master, nor is the messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you'll be blessed if you do them. Here is the life of blessing when we see God's purposes and about life and his way of going and we put it into practice. Not just the particular example there of service, although life that's other person centered is certainly the blessed life. It's more blessed to give than to receive, says the Lord Jesus, and most people take a whole life to learn that lesson. But here's five, life's five greatest questions 
that really will help you work out what life's all about. Uh, the first one is, what is what is going to be the center of my life? You know, all sorts of people center their life around something. Everyone centers around something. It might be career, it might be family, it might be hedonism and entertainment, it might be adventure, it might be all sorts of things. If it's not God, then it's going to fall apart. It's going to be shakable. We want something unshakable at the center of our lives. And that's God. And that, that's, I guess, the question of ultimate purpose and meaning. Is God going to be at the center of it? We have been planned for God's pleasure. And so are we going to base our lives around him? All sorts of people in the scriptures did, and we see the effect that they had and the way that God blessed them, even through hard times and so on. In Acts chapter 13, uh, uh, in uh, yeah, Acts chapter 13, we see that David had fulfilled God's purpose in his generation. He'd been put here for a purpose. He understood that, and he went about fulfilling it. His purpose was to serve God in particular ways, and we're going to do that. What will be the character of my life? That's the second question. You know, what, what will be the center of my life? That's the first one. What will be the character of my life? What will I be like? God is much more interested in what we are like than what we do. Right? He's not so much interested in our career path or our achievements as in how we've gone about the things that we've done. Have we lived a life that's full of the fruit of the Spirit, that's like the Beatitudes at the start of the Sermon on the Mount. You know, blessed are the meek, blessed are the humble, blessed are those who seek for peace, blessed are those who seek righteousness, hunger and thirst for that. Blessed are those who are persecuted for Jesus' name. Right, here's the life of blessing and in, in, in the way of the character of these molding us. And so what are we going to be like? It's really that question of are we going to be like Jesus Christ? We have been created to be like Christ and we've been recreated, saved to be like Christ, to have his character. He is the firstborn among many brothers and he's molding us through the life circumstances in order to take on his character and his way of, of attitude towards others and to him and so on. And so what will be the character of my life? The third question is, what will be the contribution of my life? What will be the contribution of my life? What am I going to be doing? Right? That's the question of service. We have been um, saved in order to serve. Right? We haven't been saved in order to serve ourselves. We've been saved in order to serve God and his purposes and his family and his kingdom. And so finding my gifts, my place, so that I can make that valuable contribution using the gifts, the resources, the time, the money, whatever it is, the, the skills that I have, you know, I, this is the contribution that God is calling me to make here and now. And so you know, identifying you know, what, what, how God has made you and so on, we've talked about that along the way, but what will be the contribution of my life? That's the third of life's most important questions. What will be the message of my life? You know, what are people going to come away from encountering me, whether they are believers or unbelievers, thinking I stand for? Is it for the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ? Jesus has called us to be on mission, to be go and make disciples. To be, we've been called to be ambassadors of the Lord Jesus Christ with His message of be reconciled to God. Will that be the message of our life? In our actions, in the way we interact, in our attitudes, and in what we say, are we going to point to Jesus? So that when we get to our funeral, they're not talking about us; they're talking about the Lord Jesus, who is the Great One, and and they can just see Him through our lives. You know, will our life be a testimony to him in everything that we say and do? The last question, what will be the community of my life? Am I going to surround myself with other believers so they might encourage me and build me up and keep me focused on, on, on these purposes and mission, which is what the body of Christ has been called to do, to grow to maturity so that every member might be working together and we not, wouldn't be blown around by every wind and wave of teaching in Ephesians chapter 4, but we might stand together, that we might glorify God, that we might exalt him and uh, exhort each other to to do greater things for the Lord Jesus Christ. Am I going to surround myself with other believers, be involved in their lives, let them be involved in me, asking hard questions sometimes, encouraging me where I need it, providing for each other? Am I going to be put myself out for them and let them 
put themselves out for me or I'm not the kind of person who's going to say, no, I'm going to do life all my own and you, know, you can all stay out of it and I'm not going to offer to help and so on. Or am I going to surround myself my whole time with unbelievers? There's a, there's a point where we want to have unbelievers in life in order to share the message of the Lord Jesus so they can have the life that we have. But the life that's driven by unbelievers is one that's going to be led astray in the end. You can't be yoked to unbelievers so that they drive your life. Uh, be, involve them in your life for sure, but point them towards Jesus Christ. And part of the way you do that is by the way you uh, bring them to meet other Christians and so that you all can speak together and you can all keep each other accountable in the midst of it and in your interactions. And so what will be the community? So, uh, what will be the center of my life? Will it be God or something else? Uh, what will be the character of my life? Will I try and aim to be like the Lord Jesus, glorifying him in the way that I am? What will be the contribution of my life? What will be my legacy? Where will I have served and made a difference? Uh, what will be the message of my life? Will it be the, the sound of the gospel and the Lord Jesus Christ pointing to him and what will be the community of my life? Who am I surrounding myself with that they might urge me on to love the Lord? They really are questions that are raised around the five purposes that we've been looking at over this time, how we've been planning for God's pleasure. We've been uh, created to be like Christ and recreated and saved to be like Christ. We've been formed for God's family. We have been uh, um, saved in order to serve and we've been made for a mission, the mission of the Lord Jesus Christ. I hope this has been a really interesting series of uh, devotionals. It's been really personally challenging for me. I've had lots to think about, lots that I've written down and, and things I've been working on, which has been really, really encouraging for myself. Uh, I hope it has been for you. Uh, we'll be going back to some of our more normal devotions and looking at the scriptures uh, picking up from tomorrow. Let's pray that God might do this work and that we might be those who base our lives on the rock, on the Lord Jesus, on his authority in teaching. Father, we pray that we would be like the man who built his house on the rock, that we would be founded in everything on the teaching of the Lord Jesus and of your word. We pray that you might be the center of our life, that our character might be shaped by the Lord Jesus, that we might be like him and point towards him. We pray, please, that uh, our contribution might be something worthwhile, something of eternal significance as we build into the lives of others and point them towards Jesus. We pray the message of our life might be your praises and glory now and forever and that we might point to the Lord Jesus now in everything we say and do in our interactions, the way we go about and as we share our life message and the hope that we have in the Lord Jesus. And we pray that you would uh, surround us with a community of believers who will urge us on, encourage us, but that also we can contribute to as we build each other towards maturity in Christ and service of him for your glory now, forever and ever. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless everyone. Catch you for another devotion tomorrow.